Hello and welcome to the Craft Man Show. My name is your host, the Craft Man. The Craft Man instead of crafty. And today, that do y'all remember Stickfuss? Let me go ahead right now and just say Craft Man might not be saying that right. It might be Stick Fast or Stick Files or Stick Fail. But either way, I'm referring to the brand of that toy right there. Stickfuss is a highly articulated plastic figure that comes in a little kit right there. This is what I would call the, the normal stick for. I'm going to show you something in a minute that the vet I was about, but first I just want you to see the uh, typical stick for. Alright, so the way it works is you take and just put the pieces together. One of the main attractions to a Stilfus figure is the articulation. And I think we put it together correctly. I might be wrong, but the point of this right here is to show you what a working stick for figure uh, actually looks like. Uh, it seems to hold together pretty well and might be fun to use with stop motion animation. However, this was not Craftman introduction to stick for. The first time I was introduced to stick for, I seen this right here. I remember being in Toys R Us and seeing these and thinking, that just look neat to me. So I bought me three of them. They was not very much money at that time. And brought them home. I said, let's put these together. And that's when the disappointments began. Look how brittle that is right there. Well, hold up, maybe we can connect this. Let's see what happens. Did that sound like it cracked to you? Uh, that's called it probably did right there. All right, crap, man, don't be hasty. Let's, let's keep trying this thing now. Maybe we can glue the head back on, but let's see if we could get the shoulder arm piece right there. All right. That was pretty close. Let's try the next one. And then to your child, you say, a happy birthday. That's for you right there. Do y'all think we could make a multinational tougher copy of that? I think we can do it. Injection molding would be preferential for getting a tough plastic or copy, but I think we could do it even with resin casting. But look at this mess right here, craft man. If you just would have thought, you would have got a silicone copy of that right there. When it was still all on the tree, all put together nice and uniform. That was my glove, I'm for real. If only this was a way that we could rewind time, craft man. And fair. <laughs> what? Craft man. How did you do that? Actually, what it is, is in a previous video, I mentioned that I might would like to make a tougher copy of a Stickfuss figure. And my good friend Christopher, he sent me that right there. 
And Christopher didn't just send a few answers. He gave me, listen to the an entire box Ooh. of stick for, like he just get he just he just he just Christopher just he just straight up just gave him said Craft may have this. <laughs> Even send me that right there. And that's a display stick for that you will use in your star to advertise. Christopher, thank you so much for sending me the stick for figures. So now that we got a second chance, how might we go about making a mold for this right there? Uh, we could maybe do a two-part mold and follow along the existing seam line right there. We also could do a one-part mold and just cut it out, do a cut mold, you know. Uh, but what if we just chop, 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 chop. Just mail that off to YouTube's number one silicone mold maker. Now we get to cast it. Craftman, are you just being lazy? Huh? I know Robert's mold will turn out way better than my one. And the other thing is, now Craftman can focus on Packing this thing up. Craftman would never feel right keeping out on stickful figures. So we just going to uh, casually, you know, include them in some in some orders. If it's a big enough package, we're going to just put that up and And we're probably going to go down the list of our uh, uh, Patreon supporters that's been with us a little bit and just load y'all up with some stickfuls. Christopher, thank you so very much. Look at what came in the mail. Look at that right there. I will include a link in the description to how Robert made that mold right there. He was able to do this without doing a two-part mold because he cut it open with a jeweler's cut right there. See that that means that the two have locked together. And it also has a hinge on it, which is very convenient right there. Robert, thank you for that right there. To cast these pieces, I wanted to use Smooth Iron Task File. Craftman, how come you want to use that? Well, let's look at those statistics. Task 4 is a unique polyurethane casting resin that is very, look at this right there, strong when casting ultra thin sections, ranging from something. And like my dad says, everything is a trade off. With a tougher resin, you have a longer cure time, but you also have a longer open time aka pot life, which is going to allow you to have better chance to get bubbles out, get a clean casting. The reason how come I use plastic cups is because it's more visually understandable. You can see clearly one side, the other side, but in practice you will actually want to use some silicone cups that you can use over and over again. Da, da, da. So we got our A part and our B part ready to be mixed up. And so I thought I might try to add some color to it. All right. I better watch the Kool-Aid man gonna bust through my wall in a minute. Talk about, oh yeah. I 
I decided to use me one of these little things here. Uh, it's got a little paw spat on it. It's not because I just messed up and underestimated the use little cups, you know. Nothing like that, in case you was wondering. When we mix our resin, we want to make sure that we scrape along that bottom, scrape the sides, mix it good. No swirl, just consistency. And before I start pouring, you know I got my toothpick. That's my bubble negotiator right there. And you want to be very careful and not get it uh, all over the place, all right? I'm just messing with y'all. And we just going to go through here and make sure we get as many bubbles out of them little pockets, them little crevices and creases as we can. And this is a crazy little trick right here. I'm going to take the sprue. All right, don't tell it, but I showed y'all that, all right? Now we're going to slap them together. and put them in the pressure pot with some weight on top of them. Ain't nothing to it. Before using your compressor and a uh, uh, pressure pot, always a good idea to remove your glove. See the back of glove. According to this mess right here, it's cured, all right? And this cured resin right here will show you exactly why I used the pressure pot for this. Look at that foaming mess with all them bubbles. And now I would like to show you why I used me some paper. Oh. Always a nice feeling to get back to a clean silicone mold right there. Now, I obviously got some flash because, you know, that's the nature of a squish mold, but a craft man should have used a little bit more squish. For my very first one, I'm very happy with it. Got to tell you. A better way to do this would be to do something like what Robert Talon would do. A little bit and then pressure cast it, and then do a little bit more. Why come that's such a good idea is, see that right there, little tiny bubble right there, but using something like Robert's technique would uh, eliminate that, you know, it turned out even better. And now we come to the moment of truth. Look at that right there. It's got a pretty good grip to it as well, look at that. You know, to be such a sloppy casting uh, process that I use, I can't believe that it actually turned out uh, as good as it did. And there's room for some improvements. We can go in and uh, get that flash squished out a little bit better. And that's going to help the pieces to come together. Uh, it's got a little bit of cast to it here on the but actually, uh, pieces coming loose easy, kind of like a thing with stick for, but uh, so even in the cast pieces, I was not expecting to be uh, held together that well. But one thing I can say about it is that at least the pieces go back on, ain't cracking. 
Damn. Purdy. Knee right. Knee, knee right, knee right though. Now we got us some extra pieces though. And since the main purpose of this vetal is to test the toughness of this resin, let's test the toughness of this resin. Now I do not have a very scientific way to test this. I don't have the devices and technology right here with me today, but I thought that I can just maybe feel which one is tougher. I just barely did anything to do that. In fact, what's this right though? That's pretty brutal. And obviously that was able to break, but I can tell you that it's not it does not have the pretzel now. Watch this. Watch this right there. We going to actually do it. Watch this right there. Uh, no. Okay then. Let's see. It took some effort just to leave them marks in it. But I hear you ask, Craftman, what if we don't have that specialty resin thing that you got? What if I just got regular old resin? Look at that right there. Mr. Robert Talone was kind enough to send me a test that he did in his resin, and I'm going to uh, put that across the screen right there. What's resin that was? Don't, don't. But both of them is tougher than this right here. That was pretty neat. We took something that was brittle. And cast a version of it that's even tougher than the original. I got to buy you some bubble wrap. Until next time, come on with style. I love y'all. And keep on steady of crafting. All right. All right. So we got an A part and a B part mixed up. Uh, not mixed up. Hold up. Craft me. And so I thought I might try to add some color to it. All right, let's do that. Oh, that was my glove again. Uh, really, what it is is... Uh, I'm going to go get some tape on this and get some posters on this. Yeah, I need to be standing in front of the microphone, my bad. That's what, that's what, yeah, all right.